Do you want to be preoccupied during this pandemic? How about some pretty schnazzy pins? What's inside the new Zanini Box subscription? Every single month, and I didn't mean to startle you with that, every single month, Zanini Box will deliver to you a selection of collectible pins. Schnazzy, you'll be saying aloud as you'll be walking down the neighborhood street sidewalk with everybody looking at you. They'll be looking at you, of course, from a far off distance, so it doesn't really even matter anyways. If you guys are interested in subscribing to the Zanini Box, you can click the link most definitely in the video description down below. We're going to go ahead and get these opened up. Get a good peeper look at these with these two peepers of mine and see what cool pins we've got inside. Feels like there's some extra stuff going on in there, some extra stuffing. We're gonna go ahead and cut this open and get a gander. By the way, uh, by the way, I have to stop for a second to thank the ongoing support of my brand new knife, Chet Cuttington III. A fine, fine knife and happens to be the only gift I've ever gotten from producer Tony. What do we got in here? Hello, subscribers. We would like to thank you for all your support and loyalty through this difficult time that everybody has been going through these last few days. At this time, Zanini Box tried to go to great lengths to bring you news that we would like to share with you now. <coughs> website, we've designed the look of the website so that it's easier to understand in a, cl in a clearer themes of the pins. We have a small change in the standard theme. After the Justice League collection, we will alternately send pins from the previous collection so that we can continue the collections in our box. We'll call it Keeping Collection. The new product also will be including collectible cards as our new subscription product and individual purchase. We will send nine exclusive cards every month with the themes of movies, TV shows, comics, and games. Color me interested. It actually doesn't say that. I said that myself. The idea of the cards will be to bring the covers of the themes followed by information QR codes for access to the related product and a space for the autograph if you find someone related to the card. How about that? So it seems that would be why there was an extra little bit of beef inside. There's a secondary box or a secondary bag. We're going to pull those out and I'm guessing, let's see which one is which here. Well, there, let's see here. Well, it's just, it's a bunch of, there's a bunch of stuff in here. We've got two bags, two bags full. And then we also have ourselves a schnazzy envelope. Now I'm feeling like these could possibly be the trading cards. So I'm gonna put those to the side for the time being. And it seems like I've got myself two bags, two bags to go ahead and open up. The first bag containing inside, let's see what we got here. I'm guessing maybe we got ourselves two Zanini bags inside. The first one happens to be Doc Brown. If it was the case, and of course with all the things going on in the world right now, it probably just skipped my mind that I never maybe got a Zanini box from the time before, the previous month. And maybe that's what we got right here. Was, if that was the case, it was certainly worth the wait to get ourselves a futuristic Doc Brown. Apparently the problem is your kids, Marty. Uh, you know, it's really strange when you really think about it. Somebody had posed this on Twitter and it kind of got my brain thinking like it tends to do a lot of the times. If Doc Brown pulled Marty and Jennifer from the present time to jump to the future, would they have still been able to live out that time frame in the past or in the present time? Wouldn't their future selves cease to exist or unless Doc Brown brought them back immediately right after it? But I don't know. Things, that of course, to think about. It's time paradoxes and all. I tend, tend not to think about that too much because it hurts my brain. Anyways, there's Doc Brown. Pretty, like I said, pretty schnazzy. I would imagine he, Doc probably brought them back like minutes after he took them because, of course, that would just change everything else from the time that they left to the time that they came back. Where's Marty? Where's Jennifer? Everybody's asking. How come Elizabeth Shue all of a sudden is now playing Jennifer? I wasn't the only one that was thinking that. I think I kind of like the first Jennifer from Back to the Future 1 versus Elizabeth Shue. I mean, don't get me wrong. Elizabeth Shue is fantastic. I liked her in Karate Kid and Adventures in Babysitting. Some of my personal favorites. But I prefer, I think, original Jennifer. OC Jennifer. Which, which Jennifer do you prefer? Let me know down below. It's funny that I actually say I like the first Jennifer. And yet the name escapes me completely of the poor actress that only played the role for one film. And then Elizabeth Shue just sort of took it and just ran with it. Alley with an eye. Anyways, there's Doc Brown. Nice looking pin. Very nice. Schnazzy looking pin. He's looking at his watch. Nice. Nice looking pin. Let's move on. 
because I feel like there's going to be a lot of stuff to cover off in this unboxing, the next one we have, is Ray, who apparently knows how to do every single thing in the trilogy. Fly ships? Yeah, she can do that. Pick up a lightsaber and defeat somebody who's been skilled with the saber for years. Yeah, she can do that as well. Defeat? Oh, I shouldn't want to. Don't want to give away everything. Certainly, if you haven't seen the last Rise of Skywalker. Ugh, I don't know the new trilogy. Just garbage. Anyways, anyways, there's Ray. It started good. It started in a high note right here. I felt like it started with. As soon as you saw Kylo Ren walking out at the beginning of the movie and you start hearing him talk, you're thinking, hey, I'm liking where this is going. And it starts high and then it sort of goes... That's just me. I, I might be the only one that thinks that. Anyways, there's Ray. I almost, in a way, kind of prefer the prequel trilogy to the newest trilogy. Isn't that bold for me to be saying that? The next thing we have is Kratos, complete with beard. That's a swanky looking Kratos. Look at that. Get a good gander at that. He's not completely white, mind you. He's a little bit on the more grayish side, but still a neat looking pin nonetheless. Gonna put that right over there. Uh, this is our insert cards. So we're gonna look at that in a second. Let's see what else we have in here. We have John Stewart. John Stewart. Speaking, we were just talking about it. I know, you, you and I, we were having this conversation about it. Justice League John Stewart now includes and adds on to the other Justice League members that we had looked at in previous Zanini boxes. John, good old John Stewart. I like John Stewart. I, I, I'm a, a more a Hal Jordan guy myself, but I like John Stewart certainly in Justice League. I mean, he was an A-list. A uh, Green Lantern. There we go. And we also got Tasmania, or specifically the Tasmanian Devil. Again, down below, in case you were wondering and curious as to where you can subscribe and get such cool pins like this, feel free to sit down and let me spin you a yarn. It's www.zaninibox.com. It wasn't a, was a very long yarn, I suppose. Uh, so that, let's just have a look here. This may be problematic when it comes to naming the title for this video. This one happens to be May 2020. I'm wondering if maybe we had to have opened the other one up first. I mean, it was a gamble. It was 50-50. How would I have known? The other one probably is May. If you had got the basic, though, the basic would have included Doc Brown, Tasmania, and Kratos. Then, if you upgraded and added the one, you would have gotten yourself Green Lantern, John Stewart in the standard release. And then one better, and still, if you didn't want to go with all of these and want to get all the full package of five, you'd have to go with the premium, which would also include Ray. I can do everything in the entire movie trilogy. Anyways, that's the end of that. Five pins. Basic standard, which would give you four pins, premium, which would give you all five. So that is first bag number one. This is going to be quite the undertaking. Producer Tony, I can see right now. <laughs> I can see you're doing, it. you're doing it right now. He's calling his wife. He, I, uh, wait, let me just, I'm reading his lips. I'm, I'm going to be coming home a little late tonight. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting this video to be so long. Yeah, I wasn't expecting this video to be long either. I mean, you're just sitting up there. You're, you're drinking a Coke. I'm, I'm doing all the work down here. In the trenches, Tony. Keep that in mind, please. Thank you. The next thing we're going to have a look at in the second bag opening is a Labrador Retriever. That's a nice looking pin. It's from the, it is from the Cactito uh, lineup. And again, coming to us from the, I believe, I'm trying to think of the other dog that I had gotten before. Not the real thing, of course, but the pin of the dog. I'm trying to think of, maybe it was a Labrador as well. Let's see what else we have in here. Got lots of pins, lots of pins to put on my jacket, for example. Another pin, this is a Husky, a Siberian Husky to actually be exact. My dog growing up as a kid, I actually had a dog that was a Husky Collie and it had two different colored eyes. I, I'm not making this up, I swear to you. One blue eye, one brown eye. How about that? That was my dog. My dog, Hobie. Anyways, the next pin we have is another dog, a Maltese dog. I had a neighbor that had a Maltese dog. Awfully snappy little thing. The dog was loud, too. I'm here all day. Nice looking dog, though. I like how these all have really dark panel outlines to them. So the details certainly really stand out. A little bit of reflection also on the pupils or the eyeballs of the dog. I like those. So if you're a dog fan, it seems like the majority of these pins are likely going to be of the canine variety. The next one we have is German Shepherd. 
that's not what a German Shepherd sounds like. Certainly, that's not what a Maltese sounds like. They're awfully loud, snappy little things. They're just making noise. Actually, that's what the neighbors sounded like as well half the time. Just making noise. Just making noise. We're just making noise, Tony. We're just making noise. Next one we have is a German Shepherd. A German Shepherd's a fine-looking dog. I feel like you have to be a real strong, tall, confident person to have a German Shepherd. I'm surprised I actually I don't own one. No, actually, I'm more so a cat person myself. I prefer cats to dogs. The next one we have is a pug. Although, you know, to be fair, if I was to get myself a dog, it would be in the department, I feel, of either a pug or a Scottish Terrier. I've always had a thing for Scottish Terriers. I think they're adorable little things. I'd love to put, like, a little beret on them and a plaid scarf, perhaps. Call them Scotty. Think these things out. And there's one last pin. Let's see what's going on inside here. So while it wasn't necessarily it seemed, of course, I mean, if we go back to it here as well, uh, we did get, I'm just trying to read back here. Wanted to see if there was some mention of some additional pins. Huh? I'm just looking here. I mean, we have all these doggy pins. How much is this doggy in the window? You know, the one that has no body. Ooh, you don't want that dog. But we got ourselves a pit bull. Kind, gentle natured beast so often get uh, really the bad rap. It's not necessarily the dogs that are the problems. It's the people that raise and treat their dogs badly. I mean, dogs are really like people. Bad upbringing can mean a bad soul, a bad person. Man, that's deep. You got some deep stuff going on this time around, mister. Thank you. Uh, we got ourselves some cards uh, folded in three, uh, only because I'm folding them like that. And I guess this is the start of the new cards that Zanini Box is going to be getting. Get a good sneak peek at this. Oh, they're all inserted as well. Oh, I like these. Oh, I like these a lot. Let's see what we got here. There's a lot of stuff to get a gander at. So we've got, let's see here. We've got the Amazing Spider-Man. This is Amazing Spider-Man number one. It's certainly not the value of what the original comics would be, but still nonetheless. Action Comics number one. Uh, there's Wolverine. There's Avengers Endgame. That's neat. I like that. Joker. Nice card there. Game of Thrones. There's Sekiro. Uh, Shadows uh, Die Twice. Resident Evil 2. And Breaking Bad. There's like a good mix. Good mix of stuff here. Uh, really, of all the things that uh, I, I, I'm looking at card-wise, at least, the only one I'm really not as familiar about is Sekiro. But everything else sort of wets my whistle when it comes to things I'm interested in. And just to pull out one of these cards so you guys can see what it looks like, it's a nice thick cardboard card. I mean, look how thick that card is. You could kind of throw it like a... Sh no, don't throw it. These are good cards. These are good cards, man. You don't want to be throwing these. Down below, there's a QR code. I might want to maybe scan that. Uh, name, Amazing Spider-Man number one, publisher, Marvel Comics. Published March 10th, 1963. Writer, Stan Lee. And cover artist is Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko. Of course, there is the autograph right there. Not that you're going to be getting Spider-Man's autograph. But uh, I guess you could probably get one of the newer artists doing Spider-Man. Unfortunately, poor Jack Kirby and poor, I think Steve Ditko obviously is still around. Jack Kirby long since passed, unfortunately, and lost Stan Lee, a real good-souled man of the, the world, brought comics to the forefront. He is unfortunately not there as well. So Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, two legends in the trade. Unfortunately, you wouldn't be, the, be able to get the autograph in. But I think you could still get Steve Ditko. I'm pretty sure he's kicking around. The interesting thing about these cards, though, is they're rounded off on the corners. I kind of like the way that they've done that. It makes them unique. It makes them stand out. It makes them feel like they stand out from the rest of the crowd. I feel like I also want to be grabbing myself a scanner. Hold on a second. I'm going to grab my QR code. Hold my QR scanner. Hold on one second. One second. Hold on. Hold on. Let me grab my QR scanner like I got some technology at my disposal. I do my do have my phone, though. And uh, let's just open this up. We're not going to go to skip the dishes. That's going to come later. But we're going to click the link that's down below and see what we got going on here. You'll be directed in a few minutes. Let's see what, let's see what this QR code happens to pull up. Kind of interested, actually. Oh, we got Stanley. Let's see here. So this is the Amazing Spider-Man 1963 to 1998. I guess this is a book that you can pick up. It is a book. Uh, oh, it's a file size. Due to its file size, this book may take longer to download. It's got 26 pages. Book one of 467 in Amazing Spider-Man 1963 to 1998. Well, that's not bad at all. 
I mean, it's two dollars and two cents. Granted, yes, but at least if you want, you got if you got a digital copy of Spider-Man that you can peruse in your spare time. Because of course, you've got some extra time on these digits of yours. That's kind of a handy thing to include on the back of it. It would actually have been nice if they had made it scannable at least. That it would have given you some stats on Spidey. Maybe a few comic pages as well. But still, though, that gives you the option to scan, download, and watch at your viewing pleasure. An actual Spider-Man, uh, I guess the, the PDF file or the version of that, where you'd be able to actually read the comic. That's pretty cool. So that's what the cards look like. A nice new addition. And we're going to go ahead and put them back in the sleeve so we don't damage those cards. I, I like this service. I like the fact that you do get yourself a variety of different cards. Um, they're also, like I said, very thick quality cards too. So if you're fancy, for example, i got to imagine these would also be uh, a little sampling, if you will, of the various, like they said in the front, in that advert that we read at the beginning. It's a sampling of the different themes that they have available. So there'd be like comics, there'd be like movies, there'd be like television, but pretty neat looking cards nonetheless. I like that. I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to be doing with that. If you certainly want to see what's going on more so with Zanini Box or more so you'd like to subscribe to Zanini Box, I'll put the link down below. We had a much more longer video it seemed this go around. I thank you again everybody for tuning in. I Thank you as well, Tony. You can call your wife back. You won't be missing dinner at all. If you guys, again, are interested in subscribing to the Zanini Box, I'll put the link down below in the video description. Also, if you guys are interested in maybe joining on board this band, we're not playing any venues just yet, but you can certainly uh, join by hitting that subscribe button right there. It's, it's like right there. And you can also turn on the bell notification. That will guarantee you at least when new videos are coming on for this fellow, you'll be in the know. Be in the know. And certainly stay tuned because like I said, there's going to be a lot of videos coming your way. Even though there are troubled times going on in the world right now, and there's not a lot of us that can really go out there and do stuff right now. You can certainly do stuff by watching the guy behind the camera right here. Because my... my I'm not essential services at all. I'm not going to be considering myself that. But certainly what I consider putting to you guys of something that you can watch content-wise, I think that's very much essential. I'm just thinking that myself. So stay tuned, guys. Stay tuned, my members of the mob. There's going to be a lot of videos coming your way. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.